In this video, we will see about auto sequential commutated current source inverter. What is a current source inverter? It is a power electronic converter which converts the DC input current into AC current. So the input current is constant, but we can adjust the magnitude of the current. So this is a current source inverter feeding a induction motor. This is a chopper. Suppose if you have a DC supply, you can use chopper directly or if you have a AC supply, you have to use some diode bridge rectifier is sufficient in case if you use a chopper. So the output of the chopper is a control DC. So this DC voltage is connected in series with a high value of inductance, the combination of which will act as a constant current. The amplitude of the output current is independent of the load. In voltage source inverter, the voltage output voltage will be independent of the load we always get a square wave. Similarly, in current source inverter, the amplitude of the output current is independent of the load. The power devices in a current source inverter has to withstand large reverse voltage. So normally, thyristors and GTOs are used. And for achieving the commutation of thyristors, simple capacitors can be used. There are two types of current source inverter, namely a load commutated current source inverter and force commutated current source inverter. If the thyristors gets commutated due to the nature of the load, we call it as a load commutated current source inverter. If we use some external circuit to commutate the thyristors, we call it as a force commutated thyristor. But here, in case of a current source inverter, Capacitor is sufficient to commutate the thyristors. So in this video, we will be seeing about forced commutated current source inverter. So forced commutation, you need capacitor. So auto sequential commutated current source inverter is the widely used inverter. And it is of two types, single phase and three phase, whereas um, this three phase is widely used in industries. Let us see about the single phase auto sequential commutated current source inverter. This consists of four thyristors, four diodes and two capacitors. So the diodes are used to prevent the discharging of the capacitor into the load directly. So let us see the operation of this inverter. So you have four thyristors and you note down the charge on the capacitor. So this is the initial charge on the capacitor. We are assuming that before starting T3 and T4 were in conduction. So like this. So T3, D3 current is flowing through the load D4 and T4. Okay. So initial condition is this one and the capacitor charge is this one because the charging and discharging of the capacitor helps to commutate the thyristors. Now the path is T3, D3, L, D4 and T4 and the initial voltage on the capacitor is minus Vc0. Let us consider the mode 1 in which T1 or T2 are given gate pulse. Already T3 and T4 are conducting. Now we are giving gate pulse for T1 and T2. So once gate pulse is given for T1 and T2, this capacitor voltage reverse biases T3 and this capacitor voltage reverse biases T4. So T3 and T4 will be off and the path of the current will be T1, C1, D3, L, D4, C2 and T2. Now you can see that this diode D1 as well as D2 are reversed 
or reverse biased by the capacitor. So here you have a negative. So D1 is reverse biased. Here you have positive. D2 is reverse biased. So let us write the loop equation. We will take only this part and we will write the equation. So VD1, this capacitor voltage plus this diode voltage since it is conducting voltage drop we are considering to be zero and inductor voltage is normally average inductor voltage is always zero so you can leave that one and you get the equation for vd1 so this capacitor so the current is flowing now like this and this capacitor will be charging so its polarity starts to change at one point this diode will be forward biased so once the diode is forward biased d1 is forward biased current starts to flow through both the diodes see current flows through t1 it also flows through d1 as well as d3 and current flows through the load d4 d2 c2 and t2 now under one condition all the four diodes are in conduction so you can say see that here both are in on condition both are on so this inductance is in parallel with this capacitance and this capacitance so all these things are in parallel this is the equivalent circuit because all components are in parallel we can write l and c are in parallel okay now we will write the current equation the total current i is getting split into ic as well as i not or we can write the kvl kcl equation so i plus i not that is sum of the currents meeting at this node is equal to ic and apply kvl and write the equation solve the equation it is a differential equation so you need initial conditions substitute it you will get i not as this one so it is a lc circuit so you will get some cos term so i not is equal to i into this thing when the capacitor polarity changes because the capacitor keeps on changing its charging and discharging happens and polarity changes when the capacitor changes its polarity when minus comes here this diode d3 and d4 will be turned off so now the current flows only through t1 d1 in load d2 and t2 so already we have derived for i not so i not is equal to this one where omega not we can write it as 1 by root lc so the capacitor current ic is equal to i plus i not that is equal to you add both these things you will get this one and vc is integrate ic you will get vc so this is a capacitor voltage so why do you derive all these things because we have to find what is the circuit turn off time if you know that we can be sure that the thyristor gets commutated so when this value for a for this capacitor current to be zero this term omega naught t should be equal to pi by 2 it is like cos 90 is zero so this term when it becomes 90 degree your capacitor current will be zero and if you have a sign term if it comes 90 degree you will have a maximum value now let us see the waveforms for first half cycle t1 and t2 are given gate pulse next half cycle t3 or t4 are given gate pulse so this is the capacitor voltage the initial voltage was minus vc naught and it changes its direction from minus vc naught to plus vc naught so the what we have to observe here is from minus vc naught it is coming to zero so at this instant when it becomes zero capacitor voltage becomes zero 
the diode D1 will start conduction or it will be forward biased. Okay. So that you can see in this waveform here. So the mode 1 is this short period that is minus Vc0 to 0 is mode 1 or it is represented by time period T1. And from 0 to maximum value Vc0 it is that represented by time T2. We will do this calculation next. So now you can see here from this period to this period the current tends to change its direction from plus i to minus i and this capacitor current also starts to decrease. So now D3 will become or D3 become reverse biased and it get uh, turned off whereas D1 alone carries the current. Now we will do that calculation. So already we have seen this equation diode 1 equation you equate it to 0 so that you can find what is that time period T1. So Vc0 is the initial charge on the capacitor that is the maximum value on the capacitor. So we got capacitor equation when will the capacitor will give you the maximum value when that is equal to 90 degree. So you substitute that you will get the ini initial charge on the capacitor as this one. You substitute Vc0 value here and if you simplify this one you will get T1 as this one. Next IC1 also we have already derived it is IC divided by 2 is IC1. So IC1 is equal to this one. So when this capacitor current is 0, D3 will be reverse biased. So from that we can write, so you, so when this equation will become 0, when omega naught T is equal to 90 degree or pi by 2, this becomes 0. From that you are getting T2 is equal to this one. So Tc is equal to that is the circuit turn off time is equal to T1 plus T2. So you add these two this is the circuit turn off time. So you have to ensure that this is greater than the circuit turn off time so that thyristors get commutated naturally. Now let us see about three phase inverter. The operation is similar to the single phase inverter. This is the circuit diagram. You have six thyristors T1 to T6, six capacitors and six diodes. Now let us see the operation of this inverter. Let us consider the initial condition that T1 and T2 are in conduction. So at any time two devices will be in on condition. Here we are taking the initial condition as T1 and T2 are in conduction. Now the current flows through T1, D1, load D2 and T2. So this is the path. So now let us go to mode 1. So the mode 1 starts when we give gate pulse for T3. So already T1, T2 was in conduction. Now we are giving gate pulse only for T3. In single phase converter, we normally used to give gate pulse for two devices at any time. But in three phase converter, we used to give gate pulse for only one thyristor at any time. But two devices will be in on condition. So now T1, T2 was earlier in conduction. You are going to turn on T3. So now T2 and T3 will be on and T1 will get turned off. So when you give gate pulse for T3, this capacitor will reverse bias T1. So T1 gets turned off and now current flows through T3 D1 load 
d2 t2 because we have not disturbed the lower half only we are given pulse gate pulse for upper device okay so this is the path so this is mode one starts with giving gate pulse for t3 now current is flowing in opposite direction in the capacitor so the polarity starts to change now let us go to mode 2 so in mode 2 t3 we already saw t3 d1 are in conduction now as the capacitor charges d3 will become forward biased so at one time d1 and d3 will be in conduction and lower half remains the same that is d2 and t2 current flows through d2 and t2 so the path is t3 parallel combination of d1 d3 load and d2 t2 now when the capacitor polarity keeps on charging at one condition this polarity will reverse bias d1 so d1 gets turned off and t3 d3 and current flows through the load then to d2 and t2 okay so now the current has completely transferred from this branch to this branch so this is how the process continues again you have to turn on this one t4 when t4 is turned on t2 will be turned off so the process repeats now let us see the phase current waveform you can see there are three phases ia ib and ic and uh, this is the waveform for phase a so in phase a you have two devices one and four when t1 is on you will get positive current and when t4 is on you will get negative current so if you see the device sequence so t1 is on for this period so you will get positive current and here t4 is on you will get negative current okay so t2 and t3 in this period none of the device in a phase is on so it is zero Similarly, you can draw for IB and IC. So, phase shift this IA waveform by 120 degree, you will get B phase waveform. Phase shift by 240 degree, you will get IC waveform. And here you can check in IB, you are getting minus I in this period. It means that in B phase, lower device, T6 is on. So, when T6 is on, you will get negative and when T3 is on, you will get positive current. So this is about three phase circuit. So these are applications of current source inverter, speed control of AC motor, induction heating, lagging work compensator, synchronous motor starting. So the points to remember here are a current source inverter converts DC input current to AC output current. There are two types load commutated current source inverter and force commutated. In force commutated you use a capacitor for commutating the thyristor. And the three phase auto sequential commutated inverter is widely used in industry. If you like the video do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel. And these are the references. Thank you.